movie. Um, and I want to share my screen. I'm going to, right? And let's see, share screen over here. Excellent. So do you guys see the Jamboard? Check. Okay, so room number one. Can you talk to us through your solution? Okay, so our problem was a bag of basmati rice has a mass of 0.252 kilograms, and we were supposed to find the bag's weight on Earth. Mm -hmm. So we know that the mass is 0.252 kilograms, and the gravitational force is 9.89 uh, um, uh, uh, newtons. Yeah. And what we wanted to know was the force of gravity acting upon the vice in Newton's or the weight of it. Mm -hmm. We also know that there's a relationship between the gravitational field strength and the mass. So basically what this problem is saying is uh, the end weight or like the weight we want is the gravitational field strength times the mass. And we know this because they both well, what we want in the end is the total Newtons of the, bas the, the Batsmati rice on Earth, right? And we know the gravitational field strength is measured in Newtons per kilogram, and we know the mass is measured um, just by kilograms, and we know if we multiply those two, we'll just get the Newtons, which is what we want. Okay. Yeah, and in the end, we didn't really have to use any algebra. Mm -hmm. It was more similar to the first problem that we did where we only had to multiply by Earth's gravitational force and um, the kilograms of the Basami rice. That's awesome. Um, so kudos, that is a really beautiful solution. Um, I love the fact that you you did an estimation, uh, you put the numbers. Um, this is a really pretty solution. Can we make this perfect? What is missing to this solution to make it Perfect. To go from very good to perfect. Uh, I think we missed, um, I think we missed a, uh, the units on like one of the estimation problems. You did, can you change that? Yeah. Perfect. So the 10 gets the Newtons per kilogram, the 0.25 gets kilogram, and the 2.5 gets a Newton. That is, now that is a spectacularly beautiful, perfect, Solution problem. That is nicely done, room, room, room number one. Okay, room number two. Talk to us. So basically our problem was the Earth's gravitational field exerts a force of 518 Newtons on a person. Mm -hmm. What is the mass of that person? And basically the gravitational field um, basically means the weight that's 500, like eight, uh, 518 Newtons of weight. Mm -hmm. Your weight may change depending where you are in the universe, but your mass is always the same. Your mass is how much matter you have, and that doesn't change. So what we know is there is some, that person has 518 Newtons, and the gravitational field is 9.8 Newtons per kilometer. What we want is we want to find the object in the problem's mass. So basically, like how, like what's the mass of the person? Mm -hmm. And the relationship is the gravitational force. As you can see right there, we didn't need any algebra. And then at the bottom, we did our like equation. We just did 
518 newtons divided by 9.81 newtons per kilometer and that equals the mass we just divided that up and the mass of that person is five is 52.8 kilometers so it's kilograms not kilometers but you're that's oh, yeah, kilograms um love it beautiful um every number has a unit which is great um yeah that's really nice. The one thing that is not on there, which again is you don't have, I mean, it's more for you than for anything else is to like maybe estimate it, right? So like 518 divided by 9.81, it's like 500 divided by 10, right? Which would be 50. And so you're, but otherwise that's perfect. That's a really good solution. Okay, room number three. Um, so, Basically, the gist of our problem, it's pretty long, uh, but basically uh, uh, you climb Mount Everest and when you get to the top, you basically test the gravitational pull strength and um, you like want to compare it to Earth's. Uh, so what we know, um, we know the gravitational field strength of Earth and we have all these uh, like data points over here on the left in the table. And yeah, if someone wants to talk about what we want. Yeah, so we want to, we, we know what, uh, we're trying to compare the gravitational field strength at bay um, versus on the top of Mount Everest. And the way that it's measured at bay, uh, or in, in general, is uh, newtons per kilogram. And we have a data table that consists of the newtons and the kilograms. So basically, we just have to combine them, and then we have a table of newtons per kilograms so that we can then average to get basically the, the like average gravitational field field strength on Mount Everest in newtons per kilogram, like Bay. Cool. Um, okay, and it's got units. Uh, it's perfect. So. How did we say, how did we do this problem when we were at bay? Like when we solved this problem at bay, what did we do? We measured a bunch of forces on some amounts of water, rice, milk, whatever it is that you did. We measured the mass of those amounts of water, milk, rice, whatever, using the volume and the density, right? And then we plugged that into um, a spreadsheet. So what I did um, is I made myself a spreadsheet, right? And what I did in the spreadsheet is that I basically like put my, I just copy and pasted my numbers. And then I just did a graph, right? And if you look at the graph, you can ask that you can, you know, if you double click on the graph, right? It'll give you, it'll ask, give you an option to do a trend line, for example. And you can use the equation to get the trend line. And then the equation says it's 9.77 X minus 0.953, right? So again, I would say um, if you get a problem like that in the future, make sure that you use the same strategy, right? Like the strategy was always get lots and lots of data, make a scatter plot. We don't, right? When we, do, when we do a relationship, we don't take the first point or the second point or the third point and divide the Y by the X, right? What we do is we, took all the points, we make a, date, a best fit line, a trend line, and then we do a, run, a rise over run for that line, not for individual points, okay? Um, but anyway, so close, um, 9.77 uh, uh, at bay, it's 9.81. So you notice that even if you go on top of Mount Everest, it's different, but not very different. Um, but that was this problem, that one before. Okay, problem number five, that's room four. What do you guys have? Um, so our problem was we had to find the, the rock's weight on Earth. And how we did it was we worked backwards from uh, the rock's weight on the moon divided by the gravitational field train. Mm -hmm. We get 1,380.368 kilograms. Uh, which is the mass, and then we took that and then multiplied it by Earth's gravitational field strength, and then we got one, uh, thirteen thousand five hundred forty-one point four one newtons on Earth. Okay. And then we check that by like dividing the Earth's 
uh, gravitational force and the moon's gravitational force, or gravitational field strength, and we, and then we multiplied that answer by the the two thousand two hundred fifty newtons, mm -hmm. which uh, which is the thirteen thousand five hundred forty one point four one. So yeah, cool. Um, feedback from the class. So again, um, love your answer. You guys managed to do, I would say on a normal year, like if I, if this was a test in the, if this was a question on a test, which we don't, I'm not going to do this here because we're on, we're, you know, we're remote. Um, I would say about a third of you might have made a mistake in like dividing versus multiplying, right? You guys didn't make any mistake. That's awesome. Congratulations. Um, any feedback about those numbers? Like anything that we can do? Like anything that, again, like how do we make this beautiful answer into something perfect? Anything that you can see that would add perfection to this particular answer? It, I mean, is there no units? No, the units are there. You guys actually remember your units. That's awesome. Yeah, Ramsey. Oh, I remember the six. Well, the six doesn't have any unit because it's Newtons per kilogram divided by Newtons oh, per right. kilogram. So it has no units. But yeah, no, that's right. Ramsey, what do you think? Um, I guess you could have rounded because those are some big numbers. So it big numbers, right? So whenever, again, like I know your calculator is going to give you some stuff, right? And um, you can't believe everything that's printed on a screen. We know that about the media, and we certainly know that about numbers on the calculator. So, um, twenty-two fifty, right? That's like four digits. One point six three. That's like three digits. Um, so, answer at like three or four digits, right? Like thirteen eighty would be would be nice for kilograms. Uh, and the final answer is like thirteen thousand five hundred would be fine, right? You don't need the 41.41. .41. Like that's just way too much information. There's nothing that we can do. There's no measurement we're going to make that's going to be that precise that we know, you know, we know a force within like, you know, a, a hundredth of a, of a Newton. That's just, there's no way we can do that. Like we just can't. Um, so try to keep your numbers in check, right? Like think about, think about like how many numbers you're using and aim for like two, three, four. Right, two, three, four, like five is pushing it. But otherwise, good answer, good problem, good algebra. Uh, I love the fact you use units, that's really great. Okay, last problem. Natalia, Tate, and Christopher. So let's hear it. Okay, our problem was uh, a, a rock um, has a mass of uh, five kilograms on the moon. What is the mass of the rock on Earth? Um, yeah, w there was some uh, there was some debate among our, our group as to whether mass was the um, the same regardless of uh, gravity. Um, yeah, personally, I'm a little bit shaky on mass, but um, apparently, yeah, mass is just another. Mass is basically a synonym for uh, weight, except it doesn't have to be on the Earth, so it do it does change with gravity. Um, so, unfortunately, the problem is not incredibly easy. Anyway, how we um, how we got to our uh, solution is um, we we found we found the ratio between the um, between Earth's gravity and the Moon's gravity. So, um, for for every kilogram of mass um, on on the moon, how many kilograms would that object weigh on the Earth? Um, yeah, it, it amounts to uh, 6.01. So um, each kilogram of mass on the moon means 6.01 kilograms of mass on the Earth. And since our rock weight is five kilograms um, the, um, on, on the moon, that means that on the Earth, it will weigh 6.01 times Five, which equals 30.05 kilograms. Natalia, anything you want to add to this? <laughs> Since you were the lone dissenting voice in that group? 
Okay, well, I thought that the mass would stay the same because um, it's like if you go back to the other group, um, I think it was like the other slide. Yep. Like they kept the mass the same in like transitioning, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So what do we think as a class? Does the mass change depending on where you are in the universe? I think it stays the same. It stays the same. Because it measures the amount of stuff that the, that the that the object is made of, right? Mass and mass and for mass and weight are not synonymous. I mean, they're related, but they're not synonymous. Um, weight is the amount of force, and that depends on how strong the planet is. So on Earth and on the Moon, it's going to be different. The weight, but the mass, which is like how many atoms are making the object. The mass is the same. It doesn't matter if you're on, on, the, on the Earth, on, on the surface of the sun, in a black hole, right? A hammer is a hammer is a hammer is a hammer. Like your hammer doesn't change. It's made of the same amount of stuff. It'll weigh differently on different planets because the GFS are different, but the mass is the same. Yeah, take. And so the mass is derived by the weight on the Earth? The mass is made. The mass is derived by the number of atoms that it, that makes up the object, right? But that would be e that's equal to the um the weight of the object on the Earth. It's not. It's the weight of the object divided by the GFS. Wow, so, I did not know that. Right. So the the mass is the 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 mass is the weight FG divided by the GFS. And the, no matter where you are on the moon, on the sun, or on, on the earth, it's the same amount, like it's five kilograms. Five kilograms is five kilograms is five kilograms. The Newtons are gonna be different, but the kilograms are gonna stay the same. Cool, so thank you for, thank you for, so let me see. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna 